Hi guys. So today's video is going to be a non-spoiler book review on Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This book is very highly regarded. A lot of people really adore it and it's won some, uh, some awards. So it's generally recognized to be very, very good. But just like with any book, there are things about it that I think some people will really love. And then there are things about it that some people might not really like. I personally did really enjoy this book, but there are definitely elements of it that might turn some people away from it. And one of them, well, I'll get into the the kind of synopsis of the story first. I almost would say that there are two different plots. The initial one is that there's this man named Lass, though he's a young man who grew up as an orphan and he doesn't really have much of a title. He doesn't have much of anything. He's grown up very poor. But Laszlo is a dreamer and he has always dreamed of someday going to this city that used to be told in stories from one generation to the next. And then one day the city's name was lost and every time people would go to say the name of the city, the word weep had replaced it. Eventually people just decided that it must have been some mythical city and there's really not any trace that it was ever real, but Laszlo very much believes that the city was real. He thinks that magic is involved as to why people no longer can remember the name of it and he really, really wants to find it. The somewhat second synopsis of the book, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but the second synopsis has to do with the mysteries surrounding the city and another character named Sarai. Sarai is somebody who has grown up with only a select few other people like herself and they live in constant fear that someday these people that killed everybody else that was involved in her race will come for her and the other people that she lives with. I think that that second plot line kind of is something more familiar to a lot of fantasy readers, but the first one of there being this city that people can't remember the name of anymore and this this character just dreaming of finding this city and going there someday, I think that that is a little less common. And it definitely continues throughout the story to be very unique and how those two plot lines come together is very strange, but it's a, it's, it's interesting and it's unique and it's definitely a story that I I don't know that I've read other stories and thought like, oh, this is really similar. To me, it feels like a new fairy tale. It's It's got the same kind of whimsical storytelling and the same kind of whimsical writing style. And it also has, it has a point of view that makes you feel like you're being told a story. And that's not to say that you have no connection to the characters whatsoever. I think in a lot of modern young adult and adult fantasy books, you feel like even if it's in third person, you're getting the book through the character's eyes. Even if it's multiple point of view, whenever you're with a character, you're getting the story through them. And that's because most modern young adult and adult fantasy books are told in third person limited style. So you are limited to whoever's whoever's point of view you're currently with. And in this book, it is third person omniscient. So even within one given scene, sometimes you will be able to be shown various different characters' point of views within that one chapter or within that one scene. This isn't to say that you don't get any of the characters' actual feelings. You for sure get a lot of the characters' feelings and there's a bit of, I don't want to give away spoilers, but the relationships between the characters, I found, I think a lot of times the way they're described and the innocence of a lot of the characters, it makes you kind of remember the, the all the first times regardless of whether it's a friendship or it's something romantic it just every physical feeling that somebody has or the thoughts that they have those kinds of things are definitely represented and speaking of innocence the main character laszlo is i've heard people say they think he's just like a little cinnamon roll and he's so precious and he's so sweet and so i was kind of expecting that when i picked up the book but my goodness he really is I don't know that I've come across another male protagonist in a book, regardless whether it's young adult or adult, who is who is sweeter. And then the female perspective is definitely one that's very conflicted and very complex. She has done some things that make her question how merciful she is or how decent she is. And I think beyond that, a lot of the side characters, you kind of get to, to see, because of this third person omniscient feel, you get to kind of see how they're feeling and how they're struggling with things or how they're experiencing things as well. Where I think this book is where the distinction is made between people who absolutely adore it and people who are like, Bleh, is the writing style and the fact that I personally think that this book is like a fairy tale. I think fairy tales are often so whimsical that it's not really 
realistic necessarily. Like you hear stories of like, oh, there was a princess and this knight just knew the first time he looked at her that she was the one. And so he had to slay the dragon so he could win her hand or whatever. And it's always this just immediate feeling. It's all, always, always this, I just feel this for this person and it's kind of insta-lovey and it's that kind of a story, but you can still sort of be swept away in the whimsy of it all. And if you're the kind of person who is not swept away by the whimsy of it all, you may not like this story because you aren't gonna go in and think like, that's probably exactly how I'd feel or that's probably exactly what I'd do. Like the mannerisms are realistic and the sweetness is there, but it's kind of an exaggerated, everything is somewhat exaggerated. All the feelings are very, up here. I think the writing style also plays into this idea of it feeling like a fairy tale as well because things, there are so many times that things are described through metaphors and similes or they're kind of hyperbolic, they're very extreme. And I'm not gonna lie, I really did enjoy this book but there were just a couple times that I was reading and I'm like, okay, I get it. And I kind of just skipped a little, a little tiny bit, and I don't really do that very often, but sometimes we would just get kind of sucked in so much to this metaphor that I kind of already understood, so then I would skim just a tiny bit. And I don't mean to say that I, I did that a lot and I didn't skim like entire pages or anything, but like if there was like a little paragraph and I could see that the whole paragraph was still just this analogy, then sometimes I would, I would not necessarily keep reading the entire analogy because at some point you're like, alrighty, I get it, like I, I think I'm ready to go to the next paragraph now. I know for some people that's basically blasphemy and if you want to disregard everything I say in this review that's completely fine, but I think it's worth noting that for some people, especially if you're not into that style of writing, you are going to maybe get a little frustrated sometimes. And even though I did a couple of times skim just a little bit, just a tiny bit, I still really enjoy the writing style and I normally do not like flowery writing whatsoever, but because I felt like this was supposed to be so whimsical and so fairy tale like and so not something that I can 100% relate to, I didn't mind. I actually really enjoyed it and I think it just made it all the more magical. I do want to say though, for any of you that really, really love to hate a character, you love to hate a character, this book, oh my gosh, there's a character that I don't curse, I just, I, I just, this character though, like, oh my gosh, the words that came to mind, she, I, oh, I don't know that I've ever hated a character more. And everybody, of course, is going to feel differently toward the main characters, but for me, I, I did really want everybody to just kind of have a happy ending, and I just want things to go well. And this person, this particular character, I have never found myself just being like, are you serious? Like, they kind of ruin everything. And because, like I said earlier, that one character is so sweet, they're so sweet, I just, I, I was just so angry on their behalf. Like, I, I don't know that I've ever wanted a character to die more than I wanted this character to die. And the reason I'm going into this so much, because I know some people, beyond just liking to like their main characters, they like to root against somebody in stories. And if you're that kind of person, you will probably enjoy this. Overall, if you are the kind of person that loves very artistic writing and you like fairy tales or you like really unique fantasy and you like rooting against somebody and you like rooting for your main characters, I think you will love this. The opposite, of course, then is true as well. If you don't like flowery writing, this book might frustrate you a little bit. If you get tired of metaphors and similes, this might frustrate you a little bit. If you don't like third person omniscient, if you don't like the the illogical development of certain feelings, how quick certain feelings are to develop. You might not love this, but I don't want to say don't give it a try because it is a very well-written book. I think that the story is extremely unique. Just maybe know going in that if you generally don't care for those things, maybe be aware that those things are in this. That's it though. Let me know if you guys have read this book, if you're interested in reading this book. If you have read it, let me know if you loved it or if you hated it or if you're somewhere in the middle. Let me know if you plan on reading the sequel as well because at the time I'm filming this, the sequel comes out next week, I believe, which is really exciting. So let me know if you're interested in reading the sequel. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.